Hi, welcome to Steve McDonald's Arts and Crafts. And today what I'm going to be doing is showing you how I prep a canvas. So this is just a normal, um, inexpensive canvas, ready to do a resin pour on it. And as you know, if you've tried to use a canvas before, they can be a little bit saggy in the middle. And with the weight of the resin, when you pour it, it kind of gives a dip. So what I'm doing is showing you how to avoid that dip and to be able to pour successfully over a canvas. One of the ways that I firstly um, avoid that dip is I try to tighten up the canvas because the canvas can be sometimes loose. And if they're pre-bought canvases and not ones that you've made yourself, then what you'll find is um, they can be a little bit saggy. So how I do that is I spray using water in a spray bottle and I don't kind of saturate it too much, but I do try and get it quite wet under there as well, under the frame. And I let that soak in for a little while um, to wet the canvas itself. Okay, so we'll let that soak in for five, six minutes, and then we'll come back to that. So now this has been soaking for about five minutes. It is quite wet still. Um, and as you can see, it is quite um, springy. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to dry this using my heat gun. And make sure that I get under, don't burn yourself with this. And don't get too close because the last thing you want to do is um, singe the canvas or burn yourself. So. What I do is I'm making sure I get under there and I'm drying it from the back. So what you will find is that once this is nice and dry, and this one is nice and dry now, that that will have shrunk up this canvas a little bit more. As you can hear, it sounds a lot more solid. Then what I'll do is I will take a piece of foam board and I buy this in quite large pieces. You can buy single sheets, I think from your local art supply. It's very, very cheap. And actually it does last forever. And I'll cut it so it snugly fits inside the frame, like so. And as you can see, that's quite a snug fit. And I'll push that down until it's completely level with the bottom of that frame. And if I turn that over, what you can see is you can't see any ridges here because it's completely level and what it's done is it's given me a nice firm base to be working on so when I come to do a pour with resin on this I can put down my little cups that I use um, to ensure it's level and then I can put that on there and it allows it to run off the edges but again, gives me a really firm um, work surface to be working on. As you can see, that's really nice and firm. There are no ridges around it. And then I can just quickly do a pour on that, let it cure on there, and then I, it's done. It's on a canvas. So as you can see, I'm now about to pour on this. And what I've done is I've taped off the edges of the canvas, the back edges, because I don't want the resin to get onto that if I can help it. And also what I've done is I've cut into the corners the tape and I've stuck it just a little bit onto the um, foam board to, get, to keep that securely in place. But what I would suggest is you don't want to be leaning on this too much because you don't want to be pushing that foam board through and creating any ridges because it is actually really nice and flush at the moment with that canvas. So here we go. I'm just going to pour over a midnight blue uh, that I've mixed up. Okay, I'm just doing a rough pour here. I've got nothing really in mind. I just literally want to show you how well this comes out uh, using this technique to prepare a canvas. So that's that on there. And now on what I'm using is a pure white as well. 
and I've used resin pigments for this I will put the details in the description of the ones I've used right there as well and for once unlike me I've not added any mica to it um, purely because I really want to just see how this comes out and to show you how well this technique works when using a um, when using a canvas like this and it is just a cheap canvas so I'm just going to spread that out a little bit okay let that spread through there across there and I will make sure I've got all the edges anyway but I'm just going to help it go down those edges and that's all I'm going to do with that and now I'm going to go over it with my heat guns for two reasons. One, it will help move around this resin. And two, it will kill those bubbles. And we all hate bubbles. There we go and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to scoop up some of this resin that has come off and pop that over my edges by the way this resin board was prepared with normal gesso as well so it had got a coating of gesso on it which is great I love pouring on uh, gesso And we should get a nice mirror finish to that. And as you can see now, well, I hope you can see, some cells have started to come up in that as well. I will cover this up to prevent bits and pieces getting in it from the air. And okay, there we go. This is the um, cured picture and it's been curing now for for about, I don't know, uh, must be about 30 hours. And as you can see, there is no ridges on it at all, here or anywhere. Um, it's completely flush, and the same for going round the edges as well. And what you can do is, with that piece of um, foam board in there, I've left a bit of masking tape on, you can leave that in, that gives it an extra bit of stability, or you can remove it. But I would recommend that you leave it in and just tape it off if you want to tidy up the edges, because as you can see, I didn't really cut it very neatly there, and that will be fine. Um, so I'm really pleased with that. It works every time, this method for me. There's no dipping. There's a, look, there is a little bit of movement there, but there is no dipping in that picture at all. Um, it's evenly coated and as you can see it has sailed up lovely without me really doing much to it so don't worry if you haven't got um, MDF or anything if you've got a canvas and you want to use it large or small it's easy to do and make a great job of the final resin picture I hope this has been useful very inexpensive very easy to do if you like this video, please like and subscribe and hit that bell button so uh, you don't miss out on any more of my videos. All my videos I try to do to help and share my knowledge and experience with the beginner or the slightly more advanced than the beginner so that you don't have to 
waste materials and muddle through. Thank you very much. You're a great audience and the, the comments that you've been giving and leaving to me are really positive. So, and that's what encourages me to keep making these videos. Thank you, see you soon. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like, and share this video as much as you can to help my channel grow. Bye.